Hey, this is Carlos Cavallo. Welcome back to the datingadviceguru.com weekly video podcast. Today we're going to talk about how to play hard to get. That's right. This one's going to be a raw topic for you. How to play hard to get and how to win. I'm going to give you five tips. Hey, before we get started with this today, let's make sure to do the big three. Number one, like and subscribe to the videos. Number two, turn on notifications so you know when the next one's coming out. And number three, leave me your questions and comments below. Specifically, make sure you tell me what it is you want me to cover in my next video. Look, knowing how to play hard to get is one of the most essential skills in dating and starting a relationship off on the right foot. But playing hard to get has gotten a bad name in recent years. Almost everybody thinks that it's a horribly manipulative mind game. But I'm here to tell you, it actually isn't. I know, you're saying, Carlos, please tell me it ain't so. But guess what? It's not a game. The truth is that it's a it's very important way and playful way of having tug of war in a healthy manner with your love dynamic, if you know how it really is supposed to work. But the question that many women wonder about up front is, should you even play hard to get? I mean, I can beat around the bush and about this forever, but I'm just gonna tell you that right up front, yes, you should play hard to get, but only every so often, okay? It's not something you do every day or even every week for that matter. Let me give you some of the reasons you should not play games because there's plenty of those too. Don't play hard to get to get revenge or for payback or to get the upper hand. Don't play hard to get to calm your anxieties about your relationship. Don't play hard to get to manipulate or control him or to make him sweat, make him sweat for once. Don't play hard to get to make him propose. Don't play hard to get to get a commitment out of him. Don't play hard to get to flip the tables on him. And please don't play hard to get to win him back. There are tons of reasons why you shouldn't play hard to get. And there's really only one really solid reason to play hard to get. And well, what is that reason? The reason is to drive up your value and the feelings of love in your relationship. Both of those things from a man who might not have been able to see your value otherwise. If you use hard to get correctly, a man will thank you for it. The question isn't if you should, but how to do it with kindness and compassion. I know that's not what you normally think about hard to get, but let's get into it. Well, first of all, why playing hard to get works? Why does it work at all? The reason this game, if you want to call it that, works is because, well, it works. The principle of why playing hard to get works is based on simple psychology, and it's called the scarcity principle. It's a principle that has been used on you for decades, and you might not even have been aware of it. Advertisers and marketers use scarcity to drive up the perceived value of something in your mind. And that's exactly what scarcity does in his mind. This is a quote from uh, an article I read. The scarcity principle in social psychology means the scarcity principle refers to the tendency to place a higher value on things that are perceived as rare while devaluing things that are seen as common or abundant. In other words, if I went out and bought Q-tips, those are going to cost almost next to nothing. But if I want to go out and buy diamonds or rubies or emeralds, they're going to cost more because they're more rare. Now in the real world, this means that things you get easily are not valued. Things that you work to get, on the other hand, are seen as valuable. For example, the harder it is to find oil and refine it, the higher the price is when you go to buy it at the gas pumps. The harder it is to get that college degree, the more it's valued in the work world. And the harder it is to get a date with somebody, the more you're going to value that time you get with them. You should also know that this principle works in both directions. Both of you should be a little bit hard to get from time to time. This will help each of you really know the value of the other person and you'll feel it in your relationship. So do guys play hard to get by not texting you? This is a question I get a lot. I want to throw it out up front. Is he playing games when he does this with you? Well, no, they're not trying to play games with you, which is what many women think men are up to when he waits for hours or even days to reply to your text. The real reason he isn't texting you is probably one of these three reasons. Number one, he didn't think your text needed an immediate reply. Yes, a man can actually believe that everything you needed to say was said in one text and he doesn't need to respond to it. Men simply don't place the same level of social importance on texting that most women do. I'm not saying he shouldn't reply to you, mind you, only that he might not see a reason to. Number two, he's, he's genuinely trying to disappear from your life. This is actually a lot less likely than you might think, but still it does happen. And again, you feel like he's ghosting you. Number three, he hasn't had a chance to reply to you yet. The text may not have seemed urgent, so he's waiting until he has a free moment. But what happens is 
you might jump the gun and think, oh, I'm just going to text them again anyways. And then you steal that energy, that buildup of what we call response potential. The real truth is that men almost never try to play hard to get on their own. It never even occurs to us. Men don't engage in social game playing intentionally, and we definitely don't do it within relationships. We don't hold back from women, no matter how much it might seem that way. And to be fair, most women don't intentionally play games either. The game playing is usually just a natural outcome of events and dynamics between the guy and the girl. But we think there's some intention that there simply isn't there. All right, so let's dig in and discover how to play hard to get. These are five tips for you. Tip number one, anticipation is the best part. There used to be a ketchup commercial that had a song that played during it. It said, anticipation, and they're, you know, you're watching this ketchup bottle, um, with this blob of ketchup working its way out really slowly. Now, the point of the commercial was well made. We, the viewers, just sat there watching this ketchup trying to get out of the bottle, and somehow it resonated that this wasn't just your average ketchup. This isn't some watery, junky ketchup. No, this was thick ketchup that was worth waiting for. Well, guess what? Yeah, anticipation in a relationship is every bit as good as watching and waiting for a slow blob of delicious ketchup to come out. You have to honor the buildup of energy in a relationship. It's the part, that anticipation part, that makes the whole thing so juicy, like a burger. When you finally bite in and fill your, you'll be able to fill yourself up with the love from your partner. But Unfortunately, most people are in such a rush to find out if they need to hurry up and get back on Tinder or Match.com or whatever it is that they wind up sabotaging this anticipation energy right off the bat because we're so impatient now. We want it now, now, now. We don't start or nurture relationships anymore. What we do is see how soon we can get back to looking for our replacement. So get back to letting anticipation build up. It's a key ingredient in a man's love circuits. If you short circuit this need of his, you're gonna wind up with him disappearing on you. Now, tip number two is available on the online article version of this particular topic. You can go over to datingadviceguru.com and watch it. We're moving on to tip number three, which is, whoa, Nelly, the single most common problem I see as a therapist and relationship counselor is that most women are far too willing to jump in head first and throw caution to the wind. They meet a guy that really makes them light up and she wants to go shopping for a ring right off the bat. Look, I get it. As a guy, I would even do this. Yes, there are men who are really into the romantic stuff out there, but this this moving too fast behavior has a lot of flaws. First of all, you're looking through what I call love goggles. You're under the influence of hormones, a lot of idealized thinking, so your judgment is impaired. Number two, you may get in too deep too quick. I've made this mistake before too. You jump in willingly and then you see all the red flags in your partner later on, but by then, it's really hard to back out of that relationship. And number three, you suffer from what I call day after Christmas syndrome. Like when you realize that after all the gifts are unwrapped, things are still pretty much the same. Only in a relationship you realize that no matter how great it seems, they're just another person and you still got all your old stuff. And yeah, that can feel like a huge letdown. Remember that anticipation thing that I told you about before. Taking it slow always beats jumping in too fast. When you're in a rush, you get sloppy and you make mistakes. When you take your time and really watch your step, you'll always do better. Tip number four, put them to work. If you've been watching any of my videos for any amount of time or reading my articles, you know that this is one of the essential rules of making a man value your relationship. If you give a 16-year-old kid a BMW for his birthday, don't be surprised if he trashes it on the inside, you know, litters, wrappers, and junk inside. And eventually, he might even trash the outside of the car within months. On the other hand, if you have loaned him the money to buy his own car and set up a repayment schedule for that loan, you can bet he'll treat that car like his baby. Plain and simple, folks, we don't value something we get too easily. And we don't usually value that again until we've lost it. This goes for material possessions, relationships, or anything else you can imagine. It's the old scarcity principle again, only this is the dark side of it. This principle applies in so many different areas. You gotta make him work to earn your love. Women who know that they're valuable don't just give themselves away to anybody. They know they're valuable and they wait for the right buyer to come along. All right, tip number five, know what it is he really wants. This is really the essence of what I teach. You gotta know what men are thinking, what they want, and what they actually need. Most women are simply winging it out there. They're just improv. They think they know what men want from reading a ton of crappy magazines, but they still wind up struggling in relationships. And I hate to see it happen because with just a few small tweaks, 
any woman can turn around any relationship or any man into a guy that would beg her to be his wife. So why are you secretly afraid to play hard to get? Look, there's a reason you're watching this video right now. Deep inside, you know that playing hard to get works. It absolutely does. It's a proven psychological principle, but you don't want to be a manipulating you know, biatch, or it just feels maybe a little gamey to you, like you're playing games. And you know what? You'd be right to be concerned about it. You don't want to play games with them. No matter what the reason is, though, you can relax. And you should also know you're not a horrible person for wanting to learn how to play hard to get with a guy in the right way. Here's the secret that will make all the difference for you. The secret is the point is not to play hard to get it's to be hard to get. Most women simply see that other women out there who are hard to get, they see these women and they think that this woman must be playing at it. She's doing it on purpose. Well, think about it this way. What if you were all, you were so busy this weekend that you legitimately couldn't call back the three guys you met. In fact, you really didn't even have time to send a thoughtful text to any of them. What's the difference between that happening by accident or by intention? Again, the point is not to artificially behave hard to get. The point is to actually be busy enough and so into your own life that you just don't have the time to sit around waiting for his next text or phone call. You legitimately would almost forget about him. When your life has its own momentum, he will feel that you're a challenge naturally. And that's the best way to play hard to get because you're not playing it at all. You can't just wing it. Early on, you had an excuse. When you were you know, younger, you probably started dating I don't know, in your teenage years, but then back then you didn't have a clue. And it was just fun trying stuff out and figuring out how romance worked. You had ups and downs, but it was fun. But you probably developed a lot of bad habits in the process. I mean, a lot of them. Sure, you might have lucked into a good relationship eventually, but chances are that relationship or marriage ended and you realize that you didn't really know what you should have known before you settled down with that person. Might have even married them or had kids. And I'm here to tell you that if you're dating after a divorce or you're dating in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever and beyond, you can't afford to work from that bad information anymore. So what is it men really want? Well, if you've been paying attention through these tips, you'll realize that all I've been talking about here this whole time is how you show your value. That's all there is to playing hard to get. You get them to realize that not only are you valuable, you value yourself. And that's so much more important than any man you might meet. Because sooner or later, you'll be back to the same issues after that glow of infatuation has dimmed. For a guy to see your value, for him to really recognize you as the one, he's gotta feel irresistible desire for you. And hey, I've got a video that will show you how that desire works in a guy. We'll go watch this short presentation on how to tap into his irresistible desire. You see this little link below me? That's right. Going over to datingadviceguru.com forward slash irresistible. That's datingadviceguru.com forward slash irresistible. If you want the complete tips from this particular presentation, go on over and read the article at datingadviceguru.com. It's right there available right now for you. And do the big three before you leave. Number one, like and subscribe to the video. Number two, turn on your notifications, that little bell indicator next to the button that says subscribe. And of course, leave me your comments and questions below. I really do check them out and I do answer them from time to time. This is Carlos Cavallo from datingadviceguru.com. Keep playing hard to get. And of course, live and love with passion.